Welcome to the Pajera Talks. My name is Arun and I'm Solutions Architect with uh, Noventech, which is one of the best organization to work with. And this is my channel and these are my views. And today, in continuation with Azure Well-Architected Framework, we are going to dig deeper operational excellence pillar. So let's get started with the agenda. I prepared the agenda for this one and it's pretty straightforward. So we will understand the core concept of OE stands for operational excellence here. Then we'll try to dig it deeper through a scenario. That's that's our style to understand through examples and scenarios. Uh, and then we'll find the principles on which we can plan our architecture to achieve operational excellence. And finally, checklist uh, and trade-offs with other pillars. It's absolutely uh, similar to the other three pillars that we have uh, come across or we have created the video of. And uh, let's get started with the understanding of operational excellence. Okay, so at the core of the operational excellence pillar, it's uh, DevOps practices. Yes, that ensure workload quality through standardized workflows, team collaboration, and automation. This pillar defines operating procedures for development practices, observability, and release management. These all are actually comes under the umbrella of DevOps. The goal is to minimize process variance, chances of humor error, and disruption to customers. And we can easily achieve all these through DevOps. If you are following this channel, we are also releasing the DevOps videos, and these were the benefits of DevOps, why someone should use DevOps. So to assess your operational health, you should ask a few questions. Maybe you have uh, a, a meeting with your customer and you need to understand how efficient or how excellent their operations are. You could ask simple three questions to them or you could ask three questions to yourself if you have the access of your environment, if you're running an environment on Azure. So uh, the idea is you should ask, do you execute operations with discipline? Are customers using the workload with maximum predictability? How do you learn from experience and collected data to drive continuous improvement? So these three questions, the answers of these three questions will give you the entire picture these are not the yes or no answers. You need to uh, let it be like open-ended and you would have the uh, uh, picture how the operations are maintained and why these three questions you will come across while we'll cover the scenario. You could easily connect the dots, you can relate it. So let's explain the concept of operational excellence with the scenario as you see on the screen. So, what we are doing, we are developing a cloud-based e-commerce application, all right? And uh, this is, uh, let's say this is the background. Imagine a software development team at an e-commerce company is tasked with building and maintaining a cloud-based e-commerce application using Azure. The application needs to be reliable, handle fluctuating traffic, and incorporate new features regularly, which is a very common realistic scenario that we have uh, put here. Now, if you think for the challenges that I have wrote down here, <laughs> but yes, these are the simple things. These are some challenges, which is already there in the background, handling traffic spikes, frequent feature updates and team coordination. Now, how the 
operational excellence, implementing operational excellence will help here. Let's see that picture. And this will give you a proper understanding of the core concept of operational excellence. The very first point, as you see on the slide, the team establishes standard workflows for developing, testing, and deploying updates, ensuring consistency, standard development and deployment processes. So that's what you got to do. You could utilize tools like Azure DevOps for CI/CD pipelines, ensuring each update goes through the same testing and deployment processes. That's how you can standardize the process. You could also utilize, these are the features of Azure DevOps because uh, even the pipeline as a code, you could have that pipeline for all those applications which has the common features, YAML files. You need to implement real-time monitoring to quickly identify and address performance issues, especially during high traffic events. Because if you do not have enabled proper real-time monitoring, you would not know there is a spike. Use Azure Monitor and Application Insights provide real-time performance and health data. After each deployment, the team reviews performance data and user feedback to identify areas of improvement. Azure Feedback and Analytics tools for gathering and analyzing user feedback is a wonderful way to implement this. Team should set up disaster recovery plan to handle system failures without disrupting the user experience. Uh, that falls under reliability, of course, BCDR, but you know, for this scenario, we have to put it here because all are interconnected, right? So you could utilize ASR for DR or Azure front door or traffic manager for routing users to the best performing regions. Then, uh, encourage a culture of open communication and collaboration within the team to improve coordination right and uh, we could use azure boards azure or microsoft teams uh, t chats over email like e teams over email and azure boards will give you the visualization progress and everything now Regularly review and update security measures to protect customer data and check if uh, if there is a recommendations for the compliance or the score is getting down. These things are really important and we could utilize MS Defender for this, for continuous security assessment, maintain the security posture. And of course, implementing auto scaling to manage fluctuating traffic loads if e efficiently use Azure or to scale to automatically adjust resources. So these are the things that you are implementing as operational perspective to get the excellence out of this scenario where we have these challenges to face, right? So by adopting these practices, the team ensures that the e-commerce application is not only well architected, but also operates efficiently and reliably. Operational excellence helps them handle spikes in traffic gracefully, roll out new features without disrupting services, and continuously improve the application based on real-world data and feedback. This leads to a better customer experience, a more productive development team, and a more successful e-commerce platform. So that's how important the operations are. And to achieve the excellence, you have to think this way. How you have to think, what is the way? The way is the design principles for operational excellence. Till now, we try to understand the core concept, what it is, core concept, what it is through this scenario. And now the way is design principles. What are those? Well, design principle provides guidelines for operational strategies that must be considered to address the underlying causes, not just the treat symptoms. And these are the principles. You got to embrace the DevOps culture. That was the first line that I've started this video with. At the core of the operational excellence pillar, 
we got DevOps practices. So what you got to do, the first design principle is embrace it. Okay, and then you need to establish the development standards. Evolve operations with observability, deploy with confidence, automate for efficiency, and adopt safe deployment practices. Though these are uh, the, the six principles uh, in the MS Learn from where I, uh, that I follow because I would like to stick with the uh, root. Uh, and if you ask me, I would say all these fall under the DevOps uh, umbrella. If you are following the proper DevOps practices, not only one, uh, the proper culture, then all of these things will easily be catered. But just to understand how to achieve, how to plan these design principles, we need to just segregate and start one by one. So let's start with embracing DevOps culture. Well, how? First, we need to understand the goal. First, we need to get development and operations team to work closely together. DevOps, we have talked about this many times, so I hope, I expect this is clear. So get development and operations team to work closely together, collaboration, sharing responsibilities and aiming for continuous improvement in their systems and processes to achieve the common goal to add the value to the customer. It's about creating a team culture where diverse skills and perspectives come together, focusing on a common goal without working in silos or isolation. That's the goal. We need to understand that, communicate that, make sure it is in the blood of the team. Then, what would be the outcome of this? Collaboration, shared responsibility. <laughs> uh, yes, it is connected. So both development and operations teams need to align their goals, keeping customer needs and business objectives in focus. And I would rather say they have the common goal to add value to the business, to add value to the customer software, to add value to the application, not to maintain the stability, not to just be innovative all the time, right? If they work together, if they use the right tool, if they follow the DevOps practices, they can easily achieve that. Developers should include operations in their feedback processes, ensuring that improvement benefits everyone. Operations team should support developers by sharing resources and useful feedbacks, even providing all those information which is needed and can be automated. Then DevOps should make operational tasks efficient but not overwhelming, yes. The idea of using DevOps is not to increase the workload, but to decrease it. It, it may be possible at the beginning you'll find it is uh, actually increasing your workload, but the vision should not be that. The outcome, it, once the practice is in, in line with the DevOps guidelines, it should be, it should make your work efficient and less time consuming, not overwhelming. Use technology to streamline processes and encourage open communication across the organization. We don't want to throw email and wait. It's better just call them or chat or Teams. That's what it suggests. It will help to optimize operations, right? <clears throat> now, few things, how we can actually embrace the DevOps culture. Because if you are a working professional, I'm pretty sure you have seen out of 100, uh, let's take a count 100, the, the customers that come with the DevOps, either they're using it or they want to use it, they are not actually embracing it. They're just using one tool, maybe through, they're deploying through IAC and they say it's DevOps, or maybe they are just deploying through CICD, only the deployment, not the integrations properly, and they call it uh, DevOps? No, 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 no. Let's go through this, how to embrace DevOps culture. So, we let's start with, because it's Azure, so we need to uh, utilize Azure DevOps and Azure Active Directory. 
so I'll keep the communication focused towards that. So how can we uh, do the collaboration and then the shared responsibility achieve that? Well, we can do that through the implementation of uh, Azure DevOps, implement Azure repos within Azure DevOps for source control. There's a proper integration for the developers, collaboration for the developers in the repos, allow both development operations teams to collaboratively work on the code base. Azure Active Directory can be used for managing user access, ensuring that the team members have the appropriate permissions. Integrate Azure Monitor and Azure Feedback Tools. Use Azure Monitor to track application performance and gather operational insights. Share these insights with the development team to improve the application performance. Incorporate customer feedback directly into the development lifecycle using Azure Feedback Tools. Define specific roles and permissions for team members using Azure RBAC. For instance, developers can have the development permissions in the development environment while operations might have higher privileges in the production. Automate routine operational tasks like patch management and network configuration using Azure automation. Leverage Azure AI for predictive maintenance and anomaly detection to prevent potential issues. Use Azure boards for tracking work items where both teams can view progress and discuss tasks. Azure wikis can be used to maintain and uh, maintain comprehensive documentation accessible to both development and operations. Use uh, Azure test plans to continuously test and validate application changes. Azure labs can be utilized for experimenting with new features or updates without impacting the production environment. Utilize the agile project management tools within Azure Boot to manage sprints, backlogs, and standups, ensuring a, a responsive development process. Implement and enforce cloud governance standards using Azure policies. Azure Compliance Manager can help in maintaining compliance with industry regulation, ensuring standardized procedures. Regularly conduct DR drills using ASR and ensuring the team is prepared for the emergency scenarios. For complex issues or specialized needs, use Azure support for expert assistance. Azure consultants can provide guidance on best practices and advanced configuration. And with all these practices, uh, you could have this uh, DevOps culture. So embracing a DevOps culture in Azure involves leveraging a range of Azure services to foster collaboration, streamline operations, and ensure continuous improvement. By integrating these tools into their workflows, teams can enhance efficiency, communication, and overall project outcomes, aligning with the principles of a strong DevOps culture. Here, I'm just focused upon how you can embrace the DevOps culture on Azure, so by utilizing all these things. And of course, the team members should have the mindset of DevOps, should have the mindset of uh, continuous improvement and continuous learning. All right, well, that's, uh, that's the very first design principle. I hope you liked it and uh, how we can achieve. There's so many things that we talked about. Now it's time to establish development standards. All right, so how, how efficiently uh, our team develops software by setting common development practices, ensure high quality and tracking changes and success me methods. These things we need to we need to work upon to establish uh, development standards. So the very th very first thing says will define workload specification, and it is it is really important. Write clear descriptions of what needs to be built and why, including all the technical and non-technical details. Use Azure DevOps wikis for documentation, Azure boards for detailing work items. Right, then this, this, this practice, well-defined workload specification. 
we are talking where the developers are, and the project management uh, having the conversation with the customer. You are getting all that information and updating the uh, DevOps wikis with the clear description uh, what needs to be built and why. This reduces the chance of errors and makes the development process smoother and faster. It also helps new team members understand the project quickly. Before starting work, the team documents what the software should do and how it should work, much like an architect drawing a detailed plan before building a house. You can compare and understand this point. Uh, if you're not a developer, of course, but if you're somebody who wants to learn uh, DevOps or operational excellence, <laughs> right? So use standard software development methodologies. Okay. I like it, but what are those? Well, follow a recognized way of developing software that suits your project, your team size, implement agile or scrum methodologies using Azure boards. This sets a clear workflow for the team, helping manage tasks and risk and increases the chances of delivering the project on time. The team decides to use agile methodology, which helps them work in short cycle, adapt quickly to changes and ensure everyone knows their responsibilities is something. Could be could be take it as an example, maybe. But yes. Unified source control. Is the third point where. We need to keep all code and related documents in one place where changes are tracked. Utilize Azure reports for source control management. It's a wonderful tool, supports both distributed and centralized. This helps in managing a different versions of your work and ensures that the team can work on different features simultaneously without conflict. The fourth point is the quality assurance. From the start, that's the point should not miss from the start. Test your software early and often to catch problems before they grow. Integrate Azure test plans for early and continuous testing. Ensure that the software meets all requirements and reduces risk. You have multiple environments, right? So quality assurance is must and it should be from the start. Use guidelines for writing code to make sure it's easy to understand and maintain. Use Azure repos, pull requests for code reviews and enforce coding standards. Makes the code easier to read and maintain reducing complexity. That's what we're going to achieve through consistent coding standards. Write explanations and comments in your code to clarify what it does. Encourage in code documentation and use Azure repos for version control. This makes it easier for uh, someone uh, or maybe you, some, some new member, or maybe you in the future to understand and work with your code. That's why we got to document code as you go and keep an eye on how the project is going and share this with the team. Leverage Azure boards and Azure dashboards for tracking and reporting. It helps identify where improvements can be done. So you got to track and report progress. So by establishing development standards, these all are the ways we are uh, standardizing the development. The team can work more effectively and efficiently. This approach ensures that everyone is on the same page. The quality of the software is high and the process of creating it is is as smooth as possible. It's like setting rules and guidelines for, for, for a game so everyone know how to play and enjoy it more. Enjoy is the most important part. We don't want to feel like a burden. We want to feel like less work, less time, and something new to learn. So, Evolving operations with observability. That's what it is. Next design principle. Keep a close eye on your system. Understand it better and make decision based on solid data. Evolve operations with observability. If you read it properly, you will understand. Make decisions based on solid data, observability. Understand it better. 
So how, how can we do that? Well, create a system just for checking on how your application is doing, separate from the main application. Okay, so you should have a, a, a monitoring in place or maybe a deep dive telemetry in place for all the components. This way, changes in your app won't mess uh, with how you monitor it and monitoring issues won't affect your business data. So what are we doing here? We are building a separate monitoring system. OK, so we could let's take an example to make it clear. Set up Azure Monitor to track performance and health data across all Azure resources. Use application insights specifically for your web application to monitor how the performance behave. See, there they are infrastructure. So monitoring of the infrastructure and there are uh, workloads which are running on the infrastructure. So monitoring of that workload and now workload has multiple components, then monitoring of that those components as well. And now customer is using that workload the monitoring of those things as well, the performance, the page use, how long they are looking, what they are clicking, and all those things. Telemetry, deep dive. Then collect data from your application and its environment in a in a standard way. This makes it easier to understand and use the data because everything is collected and measured in the same way. So let's take an example, implement consistent logging across your application using Azure monitors. Uh, logging capabilities, of course. This ensures that performance metrics, event logs, and other telemetry data are collected in a uniform manner. Only gather and keep the data you really need for as long as you need it. Remember, it's only one pillar. The cost is getting impacted because the tool where we are setting, keeping this data is not that cheap, right? So, Configure Azure Monitor to retain detailed performance and diagnostics data for a period that aligns with your business needs and compliance requirements, ensuring you're not storing unnecessary data. And if you are not uh, using frequently, utilize the lifecycle management, put it in a archival or cold. Now use metrics, logs, profiles, and traces each for the specific purpose. That's a different type of monitoring signals, and this ensures you are using the right tools for the right job, making monitoring more effective. And we have multiple examples to understand this. Use metrics for real-time performance monitoring, utilize logs for diagnostics and audit process, apply application insights for application level telemetry, use Azure Network Watcher for network performance and diagnostics. I hope this is clear now what I was trying to uh, say through these uh, types of monitoring signals. Now display your monitoring data on dashboard that are easy to understand and relevant to different users. This helps everyone quickly see what's going on and makes uh, informed decisions. You could design custom dashboard in Azure Monitor that cater to different roles, such as high level overview for executives and a more detailed view for IT operatives, include key metrics like CPU, memory, request rates, etc. And of course, you got to set up alerts that tell you when something important happens and what to do about it. These alerts help you respond quickly and effectively to issues. Set up alerts in Azure Monitor to notify your IT team when certain thresholds are exceeded, such as CPU usage going beyond 80%. Ensure these alerts provide detailed information to facilitate quick response and resolution. So, evolving operations with observability. In Azure means setting up a smart separate system to keep track of how your application is doing. The system should collect data efficiently, use the right kind of monitoring for different needs, show the data in a clear way and send useful alerts. 
This approach helps you understand your system better, quickly fix issues and make good decisions based on data. So we started this design principle from data and ended on data. So you can understand the importance of observability. Now we need to uh, talk about deploying with confidence. Yes, confidence is something which is very important and you get the confidence when you know something. Knowledge is the uh, core of confidence. So achieve consistent and predictable deployments every time you release software or make changes. You need to know, you need to get that knowledge. How can we achieve that? Once you have that knowledge, once you have that understanding, you can deploy with confidence. So infrastructure as code is something which will help you understand this. So you got to use code to set up and manage your infrastructure like servers and databases. Make sure your team knows how to use infrastructure as a code tool. So there are so many in the market. The one you align for your environment, your team must be aware of that. And uh, build your eyes in a way that it's easy to maintain and understand. This makes uh, setting up infrastructure repeatable and consistent, reducing human error. This approach simplifies updates and security, making it easier to manage your infrastructure. This <clears throat> define the infrastructure of, uh, of uh, uh, applications using ARM templates or Terraform or biceps specifying the required Azure services like app service, SQL, storage. So this ensures consistent creation of these resources across different environment and consistent deletion as well because everything is there on the code. So what we, what, what we need, we need to break down. We need to break down the infrastructure into logical modules such as networking, compute and storage. This modularization makes it easier to manage and understand the infrastructure code. So IAC will help you to deploy with confidence. How? By knowing the tools, by knowing the standards, by knowing how it actually helps. So what else we should know? We should know the common deployment manifest. Use the same set of deployment instructions across all environment. Reduce the work needed to maintain different setups and ensures reliability. If you have the standard set of practices, use that for all the deployments. Same instruction for all the deployment. It will same time and you already know those instructions work for your environment. Like using the same map for every journey. Ensuring you always know the route. Create a standard deployment pipelines in Azure DevOps that uses the same ARM template for deploying to different environments development, staging, and production, ensuring consistency across deployments. And this is the best practice of your design as well. You should have these environments similar. Now, create infrastructure that, does, that doesn't change once it's set up and can be easily replaced. Immutable and ephemeral infrastructure. This reduces ongoing maintenance needs and ensures that each deployment is a fresh and clean. You can easily relate yourself with the AKS uh, patching deployment. Anyways, uh, create temporary test environment in Azure using ARM templates that can be spun up quickly for testing and toned down after use. This ensures that uh, each test is performed in a clean and untouched environment. All right, so with this, we are we are good with the with this design principle of deploy with confidence but i could get you some other tools which can help you achieve that like azure policies once you have azure policies well defined you automatically have a confidence because you will not be able to deploy something that you're not allowed to you will not be able to mess up or 
breach the security because you're not allowed to because of the policies. You could utilize Azure automation, Azure DevOps practices, or Azure DevOps suite itself. So at the end, let's conclude by saying deploying with confidence means using code to manage your infrastructure, training your team well, following good development practices, having a standard deployment process and creating infrastructure that's consistent and easily replaceable. By doing this, you make sure that every deployment is predictable and reliable, much like following a well-tested recipe ensures a great dish every time. Azure provides tools and services that support these practices, making it easier to achieve deployment with confidence. And as I said, knowledge is the root cause of the confidence. If you know, you know how to build the confidence too. All right, then. It's time to auto mating for efficiency. Use software to do routine repetitive tasks instead of doing them manually. This is faster, more accurate, and less likely to have errors. You might have heard this many times, but that's the underlying idea automating anything. You don't automate something which is you're going to do once, right? So why it matters? Well, often teams spend a lot of time on tasks that are boring and repetitive. These tasks don't really need human thinking, but can take up a lot of time, especially as the work grows. Also, when people do these these tasks, they can make mistakes. And of course, frustration comes along when you're doing repetitive tasks, which they don't need to use their mind. <laughs> well, by automating these tasks, teams can save time and effort and reduce mistakes. And of course, use their mind or their valuable time doing something productive or innovative. So, how to how we can do that? Well, the very first thing is look at all the tasks your team does regularly. Evaluate. Decide which ones to automate based on how complex, time consuming and important they are. Prioritize tasks for automation. Your team can focus on more important work, be, be more productive and make fewer mistakes, like replacing manual data entry with a program that automatically inputs data into a system. Identify a repetitive deployment task in your software development cycle using Azure DevOps. Track how much time these tasks take and prioritize them for automation based on their frequency and complexity. Think carefully about whether to create your own automation tools or use existing ones. Using ready-made tools can save time and money, but building your own can be better for uh, very specific needs. Deciding whether to use a pre-built email marketing tool or developing a custom one tailored to your specific marketing strategy. Decide whether to use Azure automation for a routine task or develop a custom solution using Azure function or just use the SaaS application. For instance, you might use Azure automation for standard VM management, but build a custom Azure function for a specific complex data processing job. Right. So again, when we are in confusion ever think from business. What we are doing, what you're trying to achieve, how this is helping business or is it actually helping business? Maybe we are spending more money than we are getting out of it. Right. So that's the key idea. Whenever you are in dilemma or confused. Put it on the original test test with the business. Make sure the parts of your workload can easily work with automation. This prevents the buildup of manual tasks that can slow down progress. Designing a website so that uh, contained updates can be automated instead of manually editing pages. Design your cloud infrastructure in a way that it can be automatically deployed and managed using ARM templates. Use Azure, Met, Azure automation to regularly update and manage those resources. So overall, this can help us to uh, design workload components for automation. If you have that kind of mindset, your mind start looking for those things. What are those boring repetitive tasks and how can we automate it? Once you have that thinking process in your mind, the tools 
will come in your lap. <laughs> so treat automation tools as an essential part of your work, ensuring they are reliable and secure. This ensures that your automated tasks run smoothly and are safe from risk like security issues. So <clears throat> automate on a larger scale. Think beyond just your immediate workload. Use automation in a way that can be applied to other projects too. Save time in the long run by using proven methods and templates that can be reused. The best example here is the Azure DevOps CICD pipeline as a code. So let's say, let's conclude this principle by saying automating for efficiency is about using technology to take care of the repetitive and time consuming task. Freeing up uh, our team to do more valuable work by evaluating, prioritizing, and carefully implementing automation, you can make your process faster, more accurate, and more consistent, leading to better overall performance and growth. With this, we are jumping to safe deployment practices. <clears throat> make your software updates and deployments safe and predictable by adding safeguards to the process. Well, when developing software, many changes occur. We do understand that new features are added, bugs are fixed and configurations are altered. If these changes aren't managed properly, they can cause problems when released to customers. So, use a consistent, well-managed approach for deploying changes to reduce mistakes and handle issues quickly if they occur. And how can we do that? Well, these are some points I've gathered here. Use tools to automate your deployment process so every change follows the same steps. This reduces errors caused by manual process and ensures every update is deployed safely and reliably. Think of it like a factory assembly line where each product is made the same way, ensuring consistency and quality. Again, this is coming from the Phoenix. Set up CICD pipeline in Azure DevOps to automate the deployment of software updates. This ensures every update goes through the same set of predefined test and deployment steps, reducing manual errors. Then deploy small frequent updates. Make smaller updates to your software more often rather than big changes less frequently. Smaller updates are easier to check and less likely to cause a big problem for customers. It's like fixing a small part of a machine regularly instead of waiting for the whole machine to break down. Use feature flags to roll out new features in small increments. You can enable features for a subset of users to test and validate before uh, full rollout, reducing the risk of major issues. Test your software thoroughly at every stage of development. Catching issues early means they are less likely to reach your customer. And of course, you could save a lot of time, a lot of money if you catch them early. Slowly release updates to a small group of users first, then to more users over time. If there are no prob if there are problems, they can be fixed before they affect everyone. Hence, gradual rollout of updates. Have a plan to quickly fix or undo changes if something goes wrong. You can quickly get back to a working version if an update causes an issue. And that would be your mitigation strategy for failures. Have an emergency plan to reset your system to a working state if something major goes wrong. In a crisis, you can quickly get your system back to a safe and working condition. That's your fallback plan for emergencies. It's like having a free, having a fire escape plan in a building. A way to quickly get to safety if there is a fire. In case of critical failure, a ASR can be used to revert to a previously known good state of the application. Azure Backup ensures that you have uh, data backups to restore from if necessary. And of course, if you are using IAC, then everything is in the script. Uh, so whatever you are deploying or you may be using Azure policy, the backup is enabled by default. 
of course there is a proper assessment before creating the script so the point is you it's standardized and you won't miss and let's complete this principle by stating adopting safe deployment practices means carefully planning how you update your software making sure every change is tested and deployed systematically by doing this you reduce the risk of problems and can quickly fix them if they occur of course keeping your software stable and reliable for your customer is your uh, dharma okay so with this we are done with all the principles i hope uh, those were uh, interesting and you learned something new and i hope you go through it at least two or three times to understand all those things that we talked about but holistically it was it was all best practices of devops <laughs> but yes you should know all the in depth things that we talked about we are not done yet do not close the video we are going to get the checklist here and here we have our checklist context of managing and executing software development projects particularly in cloud environments like azure it's designed to ensure that teams are working effectively that processes are optimized and that the software developed is reliable secure and efficient let's uh, break it down or go through each of these points one by one so understand each team member's strength and integrate them into a comprehensive workflow ensure everyone knows their roles and decision making powers regular team meetings to discuss roles using tools like azure devops to assign and track tasks according to specialization during project planning at regular intervals to reassess roles and responsibilities you need to keep on tracking so if you have something like this planned where you are having those meetings to discuss the roles and you are utilizing the tools to track the task and the people who are assigned to you can check that box then you need to standardize routine an emergency task for consistency and to create detailed documentation and checklist automate repetitive task using any tool like azure automation so if you have something like this or you're planning you're good to go then use azure boards for backlog management and sprint planning that could be your software ideation planning formalize the process of software creation from from this stage you should have that uh, <clears throat> it is the beginning of uh, standardizing things or at the beginning of the development cycle uh, and during regular sprint reviews you should have that then standardize development and testing practices use azure reports for source control and azure test plans for consistent testing practices use infrastructure as code for consistent infrastructure deployment if you have already a plan or you're planning or you're already using keep checking that box if you're not you can come back and think about that ensure changes are tested and prompted reliably across environment use azure devops pipelines for ci cd to build a predictable workload supply chain monitor and analyze operational data to inform decisions we talked about it in detail in one of the design principle use azure monitor or application insight remember the separation of monitoring we talked about then prepare for and manage uh, emergency effectively set up alerting and on call rotations using azure monitor practice incident response scenarios this will help you develop emergency operations practices and automate task where human input is not critical or it's repetitive task time consuming tasks identify these automatable task and use azure logic apps azure functions azure automation 
and uh, automate it. Integrate automation early in the project life cycles. This is the key. This is the key. Upfront automation. Use Azure automation, Azure policies from the project on set. You don't want to automate something which has already been done a thousand times, it means you already wasted your time a lot. It is always better to implement upfront automation. Ensure that the deplo deployments are small, incremental, and risk managed. Utilize Azure DevOps and feature flags in Azure app configuration to define safe deployment pra practices. Quickly recover from issues during deployment. Have rollback strategies and feature toggles in place. Use ASR for app recovery. This could be a deployment failure uh, mitigation. So, when to when to consider this checklist? Well, we should uh, talk about or think about or go through this at the project initiation. And of course, if all the boxes are checked, which is very rare, if not, go through the checklist in regular intervals as well. Actually, you should go through the checklist in regular intervals as well because things which are checked first, maybe it is going haywire or maybe it is going up and down, right? It is again a regular stuff, just like security and cost. It's not a one-time thing. So adhering to this checklist helps ensure that software development process are efficient, effective, and aligned with the best practices and the principles of Azure well-architected framework operational excellence. Now, finally, at the end, we need to do some trade-offs because this is a one video of so many under well-architected framework. This is just a single pillar. We got to compare with the other four. So prioritizing rapid deployment and continuous updates, which is operational excellence, could lead to le less testing and potentially more reliability issues. Stay, stay with me. You will understand. Let's say, uh, let's take this scenario. A team focuses on quick feature rollouts to meet competitive pressures, leading to insufficient testing. This results in frequent downtime or bugs. So your reliability compromised. So the balancing act would be implementing automated testing and CICD pipeline. What we are doing here, we are excellenting our operation which can help balance the rapid development and reliability. Because you can now do the rapid, rapid deployment uh, and continuous updates in less time. This is the one of the benefit of uh, using DevOps practices, time to market. So now trading off with the security, fast paced operational changes might overlook thorough security reviews leading to potential vulnerabilities. Let's take this scenario. To streamline operations, a team automates deployments but doesn't integrate robust security checks in the process. This could expose the system to security risk. Your security will compromise. And incorporating automated security scanning tools within the deployment or development process can help maintain security standards without sacrificing operational speed. So what we are trying to do here, we are achieving the excellence in operations by putting down these standards and practices of DevOps, like DevSecOps, and it will help us to make the, to, to make the security strong, not compromise. With cost, let's see, efforts to automate and optimize operations may require upfront investment, which could increase cost in the short term. Let's take this scenario. A company invests in sophisticated automation tools for operational efficiency, resulting in higher initial cost. Your cost optimization pillar compromised. However, this leads to long-term saving due to reduced manual efforts and errors. So carefully plan investment in automation considering long-term savings and efficiency gains against short-term cost. So let's trade off with uh, 
performance. Overemphasis on streamlining operations might ignore the need for resource optimization affecting performance. And it could be easily understood through this. In pursuit of operational agility, a team deploys new features rapidly without adequately optimizing the resource usage. This could lead to inefficient use of computing resources affecting application performance. Your performance compromises. So, regular performance testing and monitoring should be integrated into operational practices to ensure that performance is not sacrificed for operational agility. All the balancing act that we talked about in all the trade-offs has already been discussed in detail and deep during the design principles. This one was the monitoring, right? So in each scenario, the key is to find a balance. Operational excellence is crucial, but it should be pursued without significantly compromising other aspects like reliability, security, and cost or performance. Azure provides various tools and services that can help in striking this balance, allowing for an approach that meets business goals while maintaining overall architectural integrity. With this, let me close this video. Thank you for watching. I hope this was useful and you have a wonderful day.